Welcome to Calabasas Teen Forum. My name is Jason Pierce, and I'm your host. Teen Forum is an opportunity for local high school students to express their views and opinions on certain issues and topics of the day. And today's topic, the environment and the global climate crisis. We have an outstanding panel today consisting of... Rod Mobini, he's a junior at Calabasas High School. He plays soccer. He's also a virtue teacher at Tarzana Elementary School, and he's happy to be here. Al Benedon, he's a junior at Calabasas High School. He plays trumpet in the wind ensemble. He coaches youth soccer, enjoys watching soccer, and he plans on being in the World Cup in South Africa in 2010, and he's also known as Big Al. Laura Weiss, she's also known as Lala. She's a junior at Calabasas High School. She plays golf. She's the president of the Doctors of Charity. She tutors. She's a singer. And watch out, she does karate. Tall Kleinman, he's a junior at Calabasas High School. He's a veteran of Calabasas Team Forum. He loves red meat, loves reading Nietzsche. His favorite movie is Starship Troopers. And he's been known to eat whole heads of lettuce. Scott Solomon, he's a junior at Calabasas High School, AKA The Clutch. He's also a crafty Calabasas Team Foreign veteran. And he just wants to know, what would Craig Diamond do? Again, today's topic is the environment and the global climate crisis. Alex, how important is it to you personally to have a clean environment? Well, I'd have to say it's actually pretty high up on my list of importance. Um, I think, especially nowadays when you have the scientists all over the globe who are, you know, saying how bad things can get, you know, kind of predicting doomsday by 2050, while it might not be accurate, at least shows that we are in some sort of trouble and like there's obvious signs, the ozone layer, I mean, half of us are going to get starting to get skin cancer at unregular ages, irregular ages. Half? I mean, where where did you where did you get that statistic? It's Alex? a made up. Did you know eighty-seven point five percent of all statistics are made up? Tall. Anyway. No, that's clever. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, what do you do personally? Yeah. How do you yeah. do your part? For um, sure. Well, I am very recycle conscious, I guess, and you know everything I can recycle. I always am, you know, the recycle bin at my house is always full and it's always actually kind of annoying because I have to take it out all the time. Um, my dad, although it's not me, drives a hybrid and I like driving the hybrid, it's fun. Um, but I guess when I think about it, there's probably more I could do for the environment. Laura, does your school, um, do they have recycling bins? What does your school do? For Our school does have recycling bins and whenever I can, I put bottles in there and if it's not at school, then I recycle at home, and I've actually just started to do that. And yeah, and we also have clubs like the Earth Club, and we, I just went to an Earth Day event, um, I think one or two weeks ago, and um, based on Earth. And, yeah. Rod, does it? Does she, Laura mentioned the faculty, and did, does the faculty promote that? Is that high on the list at your school for teachers and faculty to promote you to to recycle and to do things to clean up? Uh, yeah, I think it is, but. Mainly, I think I see when I go like after lunch, mostly I see like trash everywhere. Like they don't use it to the potential. Like they could recycle more and people could like stop just not caring about their environment because they know that someone's going to pick it up after them. So I think that our school could do more. So. Scott, what do you think? Do you see that a lot of kids your age care about the environment, or do they not, as Rod said, and just leave things out? Is it important to you personally? Well, for me, I think there's more pr pressing issues in this world that we need to worry about than just saving the environment. I mean, we're going through war right now. We have threats of terrorism. We have other oil crisis, which is kind of related to the environment. But that's more of an economic standpoint. And I don't think that we should focus so much uh, into a cause that might not even, like, benefit us in the long run. Um, I think that kids our age are somewhat reluctant to get join in on this cause 
they see it as a chore, like even Alex said that it's kind of an annoyance. And why would you want to do anything that's annoying? I mean, that seems kind of counterintuitive. <laughs> so, what do you think about Scott? Where where are you on? Okay, on, on I'm going to have to uh, completely agree here with Scott. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, let's be honest here. Most people our age really don't care about the environment. I mean, it's natural for humans to not care about things that don't really affect them when they're going to be alive. I mean, for instance, Scott here is so lazy that when we're sitting at lunch and he has to throw away a piece of garbage, he, in the trash can is like five feet away from him, he won't even get up to throw the trash away in the trash can. He'll simply say, no gives these backsies, and give it to someone else sitting around him, at which point they have to throw it away, or no gives you backsie it to someone else. Okay, this, we have a whole elaborate system just so we don't have to throw things away. It's, it's okay? very legit. That's how little we care about the environment. Okay, I just don't think it's that important. But isn't it important for your like family when you're raising a family? Your children are going to be in the environment that you created, that you destroyed by that. Okay, game. you're telling me that I'm destroying the environment by not throwing a piece of trash away. Yes. That's ridiculous. The things that are destroying the environment are huge corporations that are expending. That's um, another problem. Okay. This is what you can but do. But we're talking on a personal level here. I, in my entire lifetime, will not cause even a fraction of the amount of problems that one company that's around for one year will cause in one month. But if so I think the personal problem isn't even important at all. But if everybody thinks that, then no change is going to happen at all. That's not a good mindset for everyone to have that, like, think... If I disagree. I, yeah, I don't matter. That it's not. I'm not going to make a difference. What if I said it is a good mindset? Then I disagree. Then I would say you're completely <laughs> wrong. And especially going back to what Scott has to say about it being not one of the most important issues, like war. There's always going to be war. There's always going to be a genocide, something going on. But this world is capable of dealing with more than one problem at a time. We're not a three-year-old child who has the like, m like the attention span of a goldfish. And we're, I think that oh. sorry, we're just like. We're coherent human beings, and I think there's a way to deal with more than just one problem at a time. I think we can effectively deal with the problem in Iraq, and maybe everyone can do their part by recycling. It may not be fun, but we know it's important, and that's what makes us do it. Laura, what were you going to say? And another thing, if of course war is horrible, and it's a very important issue, but the environment is also very important, because if global warming really does like um, become worse, then... I mean, things like hurricanes and stuff, just like those little issues that are really important, that the environment and the weather can affect all of that and possibly wipe, up, wipe out populations. And I mean, so I think it's more important okay. issue. Hurricanes and global warming at this point in our development are an inevitability. In I think if we, if we spend our time right now trying to think of ways for the common person to not litter and throw up their, their trash and do this and that, it's not going to slow down global warming a substantial amount. We should be looking to the future and we should be pushing our technology in a way so that this is a non-issue. I mean, if you, you're saying that war is an inevitability and that's always going to happen, so is uh, environmental damage, environmentally damaging things at our stage in our development in our technology right now in the world. Well, global warming has already started to affect things like birds' migratory instincts. So That's assuming that global warming exists. It's happening exists. now, so yeah. it's not in the way future. The it's question is, now. as Laura was talking about, is it man-made or is it a natural cycle? Scott, what do you think? I think it has to be a natural cycle. I mean, you see anomalies in environmental patterns all the time. I mean, you have the Ice Age, you have uh, droughts, and you have famines. And they're all just cycles. Are you saying that the Ice Age occurred because of man? Because I'm pretty sure man wasn't around when the Ice Age but occurred. Is it possible oh, that um, we're I'm influencing pretty, it more? Well, I mean, I seem to recall around December, we had this huge freeze wiping out a bunch of crops. And don't you think a huge freeze wiping out a bunch of crops is not warming, but in fact freezing? Ooh. But see, global warming isn't about just everything getting hotter. It's about the climates across the world changing. And so it can bring freezes, it can bring yeah. unnatural things. I mean, that's how Hurricane Katrina, that's how it devastated New Orleans so much because it's an unnatural weather pattern that gets formed by global warming. Oh, and, I... and also, if you're disagreeing with the fact that global warming exists, if you're disputing that fact, you're disputing along with about 
everybody, every trained scientific mind. That's not true. In the planet about I, I, I never, nine, nine, That's ridiculous. Approximately, that's ridiculous. I've seen that I've seen a lot of scientists' data that issue. say that the global warming and the statistics that are being shown for it are biased. You can't say that ninety nine percent of all scientists agree that global warming yeah. is happening. But I a majority. can if it's in every newspaper. But if it's really, a, it's in every single newspaper. It can bring every single say? newspaper right. here and right. show what we it's If it's a possibility, why take the chance of not taking care of it? I actually read a really good quote on what Rod Go just and say said. Go um, it was The quote went something like, if, a, if you were like 5% positive that a chef put poison in your food, would you take that risk? No. If it was really good food? <laughs> if you oh. could die, no. It's slightly different because that food that I'm eating affects me now, whereas this thing, the uh, global warming, uh, doesn't could affect me now. Could possibly be detrimental but in the future possibly. to someone. By, by not something. even all right, by not even thinking about the fact that global warming exists, it's just showing it's pretty ignorant thoughts. I have to say, I think you. making assumptions that it automatically exists because a bunch of scientists says it ex say it exists is also you know in world war ii uh, a lot of germans said that the jews were bad and a lot of people just agreed just because that's what everyone else said is, are you saying that you're just agreeing with global warming because everyone else said that? <laughs> we do have some whether it's man-made or whether it's it's just a trend we do have there are some facts since the civil war the 10 hottest years on record have been in the past 14 years the hottest being 2005. so whether it's man-made or whether it's just a, a historical trend do you think we have an obligation, Scott, to, to try to combat that and do something? Well, as I said, it's just an anomaly in the weather pattern. I mean, obviously, each year it isn't going to have the exact same uh, global or weather pattern. It's going to be hotter some years and colder some others. I mean, maybe we're just in a streak of heat, and in the future we might be colder. I mean, it's just fluctuations, and of course it's going to deviate a little from the mean, but... I mean. So what do you what do you think global warming is? What's your definition of it? Um, hocus pocus. <laughs> I mean, it's so, Lara, we somebody mentioned earlier. It seems like it's been a topic on everybody's mind. We've we've had Al Gore's The Inconvenient Truth. The Oscars had a, was very green. Do you think with the celebrities, do you really mean what they're saying with what they're proposing, or is it just a a, a passing fad for them? Well, I think that if um, if they actually like work on it then I think they have to have, believe in it somewhat I mean whether or not it's just for publicity I mean they wouldn't work on it if they really did have some feelings for it Alex know? what do you think like Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> well I think you have your people who generally like ge like actually believe in the global warming and its causes like you obviously have Al Gore who made the movie An Inconvenient Truth and kind of brought global warming to you know, to be very, be very important in our society. But I think you have your celebrities who are maybe doing it just for the trend, you know, to look good. I mean, I can't really think of any, you know, specific examples, but, you know, publicity stunts are huge these days, and why not make a, you know, like a recycling publicity stunt, you know? Do you, you said your father drove a hybrid. Yes. Does he do it more for because he's environmentally conscious or because it saves him money on gas? Um, well, he got the hybrid like a few like a few years ago, kind of before they were really popular. So I'm, th and he, I think it was probably a combination of both because you have to you know when you're gonna buy something it has to be like worth your money, and so the fact that hybrids save money on gas is one of the huge upsides, and the fact that you know you're polluting the air less is you know the other big, you know good part of it and so I think yeah a combination of both whether or not global warming is a true thing as some believe or and some don't we do have an oil crisis with with a shortage and rising prices do you think Americans are willing to give up the style and the speed and the size for hybrid cars or for something more economic uh, economically speaking Scott do you think Americans are willing to do that or, uh, or you personally definitely not I I personally I don't drive this flashy car I'm just driving a Honda Civic I mean, it gets good fuel efficiency, which is good because it's easier on the wallet. Um, but you have people, and they just want the the baller car, and they want all the accessories. They want to be uh, have like five TVs in a the car. They want to 
be putting in the most expensive gas type. They want to, like, they want their car to make a statement about them and that if they're rolling in this big flashy car, they're this big flashy person. And that makes them this cooler person. I don't think that image is going to change all of a sudden. Rod, what do you think? Well, I think uh, a car is basically just to get from point A to point B, and I, I guess why not get something that helps the environment and helps your wallet, I guess. So hybrid cars, are, I think they're going to start getting better because people are just going to get like... Of course, there's going to be the people with the Ferraris and the Lamborghinis, and, but I, I think that hybrid cars are on the rise, and peop, there's going to probably be a new invention that makes it like even better somehow. Mm. I think that they should make really cute hybrid cars so that people will want to buy them. Oh my god. I mean, god. not that they're not cute already, <laughs> make but... Make them cosmetically. Appealing. Exactly. <laughs> and in talking about the oil shortage, which is coming and at some point will continue getting thinner and thinner, do you think companies, what's an incentive for companies to do more about finding alternative fuel for us? I, Why don't politicians and big, you, Tal, you're very yeah. corporate minded. Why don't corporations do more for that? See, well, I was, what, continuing from what I was saying before, the environmental problem shouldn't be the common man problem. It should be a problem of the corporations and people that are actually making a significant hit on the actual environment. I think corporations are getting off easy right now with all the pollution and things that they're doing to the environment, and there should be stricter... Um, uh, restrictions on uh, the the f first of all fuel and oil and energy stranglehold that is on America right now that has guided us through recessions and and money problems in the, since the Cold War and on just um, wasting of energy in general and also back to the um, the the uh, American lifestyle thing I think that Americans will go where the money is. Um, I don't think people buy hybrid cars to save the environment. I think a majority of the people that buy hybrid cars buy hybrid cars to save money. And it's, oh, it's like a nice bonus that you can say, oh, yeah, you know, I have a hybrid car, so I'm not damaging the world as much as you are. But at the same time, I think if there's a huge problem with the biggest incentive to buy hybrid cars because gas money is so high. I think if it keeps going higher, people will buy more and more hybrid cars. Do you think there should, Scott, do you think there should be tax incentives for buying hybrid cars? Or do you think, that, say, the carpool lane, you have a hybrid you can drive in the carpool mm -hmm. lane solo. Are those good things? Is that in the right direction? I think if you want to encourage it, I guess it's a good idea. I don't really see the purpose of it because the whole purpose of the carpool lane is to decrease congestion on the freeway. And if more and more people are buying hybrid cars and taking up the, the carpool lane, they're kind of defeating the purpose of it. But um, back to your question before, I think that, the oil companies themselves are going to be the leading researchers in this new energy form because they know that oil is a limited energy source and they know that once the supplies dwindle, they're not going to have anything to make money off of anymore. So they're going to have to devote some money into researching other possible um, uh, uses or other materials that you could use for cars and things like that. So I think that the business is, because it is a business, it will be the, it will be able to solve its own problem. I, what were you gonna say, Brian? I, I, th I disagree a little because if those oil companies think of another way, that'll get the money, I guess, but isn't it easier for them just to keep all the oil and then raise the prices and say, this is the only way? You guys have no other way. Yeah, for, for some time that might work, but in the end, the whole world uses oil it's not like a couple of businesses in america is just gonna like hold out on the rest of the oil it's just a matter of time and they know that they need to be the one to lead the way to find this new energy source should um should the government intercede some somehow and uh, like cigarettes should they tax the gas guzzlers more alex what do you think should should hummers and whatnot be be taxed more well that's it's a delicate situation because there are some people who have those larger cars for actual reasons. They'll have even one, they might have huge families or they might need an SUV because they go up to the mountains or something. For work they need or the, for Yeah, for the four-wheel drive because I personally in that situation we do have that because we go up to Big Bear in the mountains a lot and 
SUVs are the best way to get up there because they're very reliable in that sense. But it's so yeah, it's kind of hard because there you have your people with the Hummers, who's just the one gut dude who just you know wants to look cool. And there's I mean there's few people who buy Hummers for a family. Like you'll see mostly people buying minivans or Suburbans. So I think you there may be like a certain like cost of an SUV. Like you have the more expensive ones maybe. Yeah, why not? Speaking about, I've got a question here. Should hunting and fishing be more restricted? Now, we're just not talking about the environment, but we're talking about wildlife and endangered wildlife. Should there be more restrictions on hunting and fishing and stricter penalties for those who break the laws? Say in Africa, I think there was a story a week ago where some um, endangered gorillas were, were killed. Scott, should well, there be tough, tougher penalties for those who, who break those hunting and fishing laws? Well... The laws that are in place are there for a reason, and the laws have a certain limit, but I think that when you have um, too many laws or too restrictive laws, you lose a lot of your personal freedoms, because, I mean, for many people, that's how they can support themselves. They, some of them use it just for leisure, but others use it as a means of making money, and if they're constantly being restricted, by laws and taxes and things like that, then it doesn't become profitable anymore. And you, um, we all have a right to maintain our civil liberties, and we shouldn't be restricted. Tall? I'm just going to say no. Um, if a guy wants to go and kill some bears, yeah. the guy should just go and be able to kill some bears. Yeah, bears are fierce. Do I we mean, really if, want if them that, killing if our that's children? What gives you, if that's what tickles your pickle, and you want to go <laughs> kill some bears... Then let the guy get a shotgun and kill some bears. I've got one another question here. Tali had written up. What do you feel about vegetarian vegetarianism? Because a lot of vegans and vegetarian vegetarians think that uh, going the vegetarian way is better for the environment. You have bovine gas, which which just contributes to global warming. Plus, just planting more plants. Scott, what do you think about that? Well, I think that meat is delicious. I love <laughs> meat. I second that. Um, for me. If you are a vegetarian by choice, that's fine. If you're a vegetarian because you get sick when you eat red meat, that's fine. What I have a problem with is if you start acting like you're better than everyone else for eating meat or for not eating meat or if you act like you're really helping saving the world by not eating meat. So the fact of the matter is that the more meat that you don't eat, the more grain you do eat. And if you're eating more grain, you need to clear more land for grain. If you're clearing more land for grain, guess who are losing homes? The animals that you're claiming to save. Ooh. So, Laura, what well, do you think, think that about? I think vegetarians eat leaves off trees. I mean, they like eat fruits and stuff like that, which everyone else does. So I don't really see what you are talking about. Well, I just like to say that um, I think a man named Maddox summed it up best when he said that um, when he was talking to vegetarian. Um, for every animal you don't eat, I'll eat three. And um, I'll follow that up by saying that I think, okay, come on, animals are going to die either way. And you not eating meat isn't going to do anything if, if you're the kind of vegetarian that's like all like, I'm saving the world because I'm a vegetarian, which is really annoying. Um, just let us meat eaters eat our meat in peace. Okay, if you want to just not eat meat because you don't like the way it tastes, it bothers you, that's fine. But just don't try and make me not do my thing okay i like killing animals and eating them and i don't like trees or acorns or bambi anything that <laughs> Brad, what are you, gonna oh, say? You, you said that animals die either way right so yes do. They so do. do humans and why so you're saying that like when a human dies we should just eat are it. you promoting cannibalism <laughs> well, i think he is that's what i'm no I think. okay i'm saying that a company that manufactures meat is going to kill the same amount of cows whether you are not eating the meat or not okay i think that's the way they do that is really cruel and they, i think it's they ridiculous cut to have it. blood spilled on us by PETA. okay PETA. okay seriously the extremist vegetarians are ridiculous they're comparing starving cows to starving children from the holocaust Okay. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not comparing the cows to the children. I'm just saying that, like, isn't that kind of, when we have other food sources, why would you choose to eat meat uh, taste about cow that, how about amino I understand, acids? I eat meat too, and but not cow's a, delicious. Not a lot of vegetarians are trying to spread their opinion on you. I mean, the vegetarians I know are just 
keep it to themselves. And, you well, know, I already said I don't have a problem with those people. It's I, the extremist okay. people. I think you guys have kind of deviated from the actual question. The, if you remember what he was originally asking, it was about health benefits of vegetarianism, and you just started talking about <laughs> yeah, well, vegetarians well, who say they're better than everyone To be everyone honest, else. I don't remember well, the question. So, well, yeah, so how, maybe, hold on. How about, how, how are you supposed to attain the proper protein if you're not eating meat? So how about, how about so Alex, Alex, go ahead. How about essential you amino acids that you can't get from not eating meat? You need amino acids. Alex, go ahead and finish your thought there. Um, there's all ten, so many alternative ways to eat protein. You can eat soy without having to eat the unhealthy fat that comes from cows. I mean, personally, I'm not a, veg I'm not a vegetarian myself. I, I do enjoy eating meat, but I don't think if somebody wants to eat meat, like wants to be a vegetarian and is proud of it, I mean, you can say, I mean, is that saying like you should like not put a sticker on the back of a car that says like baby on board because like I have a baby, I don't care. Well, guys, I'd love to keep talking about that. That's a good point, but that's all the time we have left. Thank you. You've been a great panel, and thank you for tuning in to Calabasas Teen Forum. Now, if you want more information on this show or if you want to see archived episodes, see our website, cityofcalabasas.com, where you can also find out what you can do right here and now to help the local environment. Thank you very much again. I'm Jason Pierce, and I'm your host, and we'll see you next time on Calabasas Teen Forum.